Hi boys and girls, today is Thursday and we are gonna look at the second part of our graphing project. Yesterday, you guys developed two ideas for survey questions, selected the best choice, crafted the perfect survey question, created a Google form and shared your form on a Google sheet. Way to go, nice job third graders. I really enjoyed filling out your surveys, seeing what kind of questions you developed. And I think today you're gonna, it's exciting because you're gonna get to see your results. So before we do anything, I want you to make sure that A, if you did not create a survey yesterday, you will not be able to do the work today. So make sure you check back to my lesson yesterday and create your survey. Also, make sure it's on that document with the sheet so that everybody can take your survey. The second thing you're gonna do, B, is you're gonna go take some more surveys. For my friends who posted later on in the afternoon yesterday, they may not have as much data if not as many people took their surveys. So before you start anything, go ahead, click around, find some more surveys that you did not vote on, and just make sure you're not voting more than once. After that, you're gonna go get your data. I'm gonna show you in pictures and then I'll hop onto a survey and show you what it looks like. So when you go into your survey, which is going to be in your math folder on a Google form, you're gonna go and you're gonna see at the head, the heading is gonna be the questions, and then you're gonna see there's responses. You'll see a little number next to it. Now that little number represents how many responses you got. So when I was looking at my Google form, at the time I had nine responses. So you'll then go into responses and you'll have three choices, summary, question, and individual. Summary will sometimes give you who answered what question, and question will give you an itemized list of all the questions and what the answers were to that question. So when I go into question, I will see that I have my three question choices, sometimes yes and no, and I'm gonna look for the amount of responses underneath. That is my data. Let me show you what this looks like if I was going on to a new survey. So here is another survey that I created called Room Color, and I had 22 votes. So if you remember from what I was just showing you, I'm not gonna look at questions, I'm gonna go to responses. When I click on responses, I've got a summary here, it gives me a nice bar or pie graph. I'm going to go to question. I'll have one of one because I only asked one question, as did you, and then I'll see my responses. I have eight for blue, eight for teal, four for pink, and two for gray. So those are my, that's my data for my graphs. That's all you need to do today is grab that data. We don't need anything else with any of these tabs. So let's just do that one more time. I go here, go over to responses, and get to that middle right here, question, and you'll get all of that data, okay? So let's go back. You're gonna get your data, and then you're gonna go ahead and in this Google Slides, which will be in your math folder, you're going to complete this data table. So you're gonna put all of your answer choices, and I'm going back to the one about my balanced ball for this one, and I've got a sometimes vote, a yes vote, or a no vote. So your answer choices are going here, and then your totals are going here. So I'm going to compare my data. Let's say I got six, two and two. So I'm gonna go ahead and put six votes. I'm sorry, I think it's six, two and one. So six votes, two votes and one vote. So that's what I need to complete today for my first way of organizing data is in a table. Then what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm going to start thinking about which graph do I wanna represent my data in. Do I wanna do a bar graph? a pictograph, or a line plot. So I filled out all three to show you your choices. So you guys are going to have a PDF so that you can either print it out or you can edit it with Cami. So you will have all three graphing templates in your math folder along with these slides so that you can decide however you want to fill in your graph. So I created my bar graph making sure that I do a title, making sure that I label my axes, so my vertical axes is the number of votes, and I have my scale. Now the highest it went up to was six, so I just stopped at six. Then at the bottom on my 
horizontal axes. I'm labeling that these are the colors. And then I give myself my word choice. Um, I give myself the choices that people voted on. Now you'll see these green arrows here. These green arrows are here because I want to remind you that bar graphs do not touch each other. They have a space in between every single one. So if you followed instructions of yesterday's lesson, you will only have four to five choices. So it will work out perfectly because you can do it so that every single one has its own space without touching each other. So then I can just go ahead and fill out my graph. So I go back to my data table and it says six for sometimes, two for yes, one for no. So I can go ahead and put my yes would be up to two and my no would be up to zero. I'm sorry, it would be up to one. Remember zero is that point where the horizontal and the vertical axis start and touch each other. So that's my bar graph. For my pictograph, you're going to make sure you have a title. You're going to label the answer choices here on the left side, and then you're going to create your key. So remember that you can have, for a pictograph, you can have things that are split in half. So for me, I had six as my highest, so I decided to do even numbers. So two, four, six for sometimes, two votes for yes, and I have a half here for the one for the no vote. So make sure your key reflects your pictures. Now I put these dotted lines in here because what I want you guys to do is I want you to think about these imaginary lines here so that you can line up your pictures. They shouldn't be all smushed together. Why not? Because I can easily see that this has two more circles than this one. And I know each circle equals two. So I can go, oh, boom, that one has four more votes than yes does. Sometimes has four more votes than yes. So keep your pictures in an organized fashion. Now, why did I pick this circle? Because in my classroom, the balance balls are this color and they're in the shape of a circle. So if you're asking about pets, something I want to note is that you need to pick one picture. So pick dogs for everyone. Or if you're thinking about ice cream cones, you're just doing that one ice cream cone for everyone. So there's one picture for the whole graph. If you're doing a line plot, you're going to continue the same thing. Your balance ball, oops, I should be putting that down here on title. So you're going to put your title right down here. And then you're going to have your labels of what your answer choice is along each one of these little dashes. And then remember with a line plot, your data goes in a vertical way with X's. So sometimes got six votes, yes got two votes, and no got one vote. So and you'll see my dotted lines here. This just reminds me that I should line up my X's so that I can quickly glance and say, oh, whoa, there are four more votes for sometimes than there are for yes. If they're kind of spaced unevenly, it makes the graph hard to read. You don't have to draw in these lines, although you can if you want. So your job today is to go retrieve your results, then create one choice of table. If you want to do, oh no, I'm sorry, create a table organizing the data. So that was that slide that you're going to complete. Then you're going to choose a graph. If you want to do more than one graph, you're absolutely welcome to. We would love to see how your data looks in different formats, but all you must do is complete one graph. Make sure you watch this lesson again or go back into any of the lessons from Miss Luciano and I to remind yourselves about the components of each graph. Then you're going to either print your graph and fill it out with marker and pencil or open it up with Kami. All three of these graphs are going to be placed in your math folder. Be sure that you're going to label all of the parts and make like I said, go back into the lessons if needed. If you are someone who prints it out, feel free to put it on your June e-learning slideshow or snap a picture of it for Seesaw. Or if you're doing it on Kami, shoot your teacher an email and just say, Miss Mangan, I edited my graphs with Kami, so we know to look in your math folders for them. So third graders, we hope that you have a lot of fun with this, exploring the answers to your questions and enjoy making your graphs. Take your time, label everything, make it neat. If you're using pencil, maybe you go over it with marker. This is kind of like your final project for our graphing unit. So really take your time, make it detailed, make it accurate and have some fun. All right, guys, if you have any questions, of course, talk at our Zoom and I will 
See you all in your graphs later.